My name is Dana Ruone and I will tell you in this presentation about phases of mediation. I will explain how many phases are in mediation and what is essential to do in each phase of mediation. Mediation is a structured process. That is a process of negotiations in which mediator helps to the parties to resolve their dispute. Uh, mediation goes through several phases and many times parties do not even notice that they are going through this structure. However, mediator as a professional must know that and must lead the parties through this process. Mediator is responsible for preparing the parties for the mediation process and must organize every stage of this structure so the parties could benefit from the process in total. Uh, mediator must prepare the room for the mediation sessions and this will be also explained in this presentation. Structure is very helpful for the mediation process, otherwise without the structure the parties are just in negotiation process. So the mediator leads them through and helps the parties to come to the settlement. Uh, Structure is also very important for the mediator because the mediator needs to understand how fast or how slow the parties go through the process and at which stage of the process the parties at the current moment is. Also, mediation is very flexible as a process. For instance, if in the phase 3 or if even in the phase 4 the mediator discovers that something is not stated in the phase number two or phase number one, then, in contrary to the litigation process, mediator is free any time to return back to the previous stages and renew the process from the beginning. However, sure, it is advisable that the mediator do not rush to the last phase, but do everything very correctly immediately from the very uh, first moment. How many phases there are in mediation? If we look uh, at the various scholars, what they write about mediation process, we can see that there are from three to even eight phases of mediation. However, according to classical approach, there are five phases of mediation. But before the mediation begins, we can even say that there is phase number zero, the phase before other phases, when mediator meets each of the parties and explains to the parties the rules of mediation process and many times signs the mediation contract before the mediation process really starts. So what happens is that mediator meets each party separately and in a peaceful and nice and safe environment uh, prepares the parties for the mediation process to come. The five phases of mediation are Phase number one is introduction, phase number two explanation of situation, phase number three explanation of interests and values of the parties, phase number four looking for solutions and phase number five conclusion of the final agreement. So let's see how these phases go one after one. So the phase number zero or pre-phase before the each next phase is conclusion agreement uh, with the parties. So the parties, normally one of the parties contact the mediator and normally this uh, contact is through e e um, either the email or the phone call and asks the help of the mediator in a possible dispute. So the mediator then uh, is able to explain to the parties how the mediation process can pro probably go and mediator can also give a phone call or write an email to the opponent party explaining that the opponent has contacted him or her and the mediator can probably offer his help in the mediation process. So that is how the mediator contacts them, the both parties. Then mediator is under obligation to explain to both parties what are the mediation process. And this can be probably done either in a phone call or by email, but most effectively in presence. 
So therefore, uh, the mediator can invite one or both parties together to his office and explain the rules of mediation. Mediator must also discover what are needs, concerns and interests of both parties. This means the mediator must know what are the needs of the parties, what do they need to participate in the mediation process, what are their prerequisites to participate in this event. Then regarding concerns, are there any doubts, any fears, any other concerns which the parties want to say to the mediator before the party decides whether to go on with this process. And then expectations. The mediator should ask to the parties what they expect uh, this outcome to be. So the mediator keeps neutral and objective at the process of this pre-stage of mediation and should at no circumstances give any advices or show any uh, beneficial attitude towards the one or another party. So therefore the mediator just explains the process, explains the preconditions under which the mediator agrees to work on this case. Uh, normally the mediator can sign immediately the, the contract with both of the parties so their financial arrangements and their uh, rights and obligations in this mediation process could be clear to both parties. Then the mediator can proceed to the phase number one which is introductory part. This is the first part, the first phase where mediator meets with both of the parties present in the same office. So that is actually the first time when the parties arrive to mediator's office together both and start in the presence of mediator explaining their situation. But how it begins? It begins with entering of the parties in the mediator's office and the mediator is responsible for setting a nice, safe and fit for the work environment so the parties could feel safe, heard and um, prepared for the work. Mediator greets the parties, mediator says hello or good morning and calls his or her name. My name is Dana Ruone, I will be your mediator, thank you for coming. And with these words, with this very explicit uh, impression and with this very explicit attitude shows that the parties are welcome and the mediator is prepared and ready to work on this case. The first impression is very important in the phase number one. Uh, mediator also asks immediately how he could call the parties. May I call you Mr. Smith or would you like to be called Peter? So mediator clarifies how the parties want them to be addressed. Mediator should remember this and use this choice made by the parties. Then mediator proceeds with explanation of the rules of the mediation. For the first times when the mediator starts the work, it would be recommended that the mediator keeps some notes, have some guidelines how to proceed with this phase number one, because rules are many and mediator should be very organized and not to be chaotic. So to go through all these uh, essential things. First of all, mediator reminds the parties that they have concluded agreement with mediator and there are several principles included. The principle of neutrality, the principle of confidentiality, the principle of cooperation and the other principles. Mediator asks to both of the parties, are they satisfied with these principles? Is this acceptable? And the mediator should ask this question to one party and then after receiving the acceptance ask the same question to the other party. So only then this equality is guaranteed if both parties affirms that this is acceptable for them. Uh, then mediator should uh, rem uh, remind the parties that the process is completely voluntary, which means that parties have freedom to leave the mediation room any time. However, the mediator with his activities, with his behavior, should do the best to keep the parties in, to encourage them to work on with the case. Then mediator should 
remind the parties importance of confidentiality. Confidentiality could be in a vertical form and of horizontal form. Vertical confidentiality means that the mediator is obliged to keep confidentiality and to keep all information at himself, with himself, and not to disclose. However, horizontal confidentiality means that the parties are also responsible for keeping confidential all the information which is received during mediation session. That is harder thing to do. However, mediation sh mediators should remind the parties about importance of this uh, rule. Then, mediator reminds the parties about equality rule and cooperation rule, which means that both parties are completely equal in this process and the parties should, at their best endeavor, cooperate between themselves to reach the best solution. And mediator also uh, informs the uh, parties that he is completely neutral and he is not interested in the outcome of the case and if there will be any doubts of his neutrality, parties may any time to say this and well, then the, the parties can discuss if this neutrality breached or no. Uh, if parties are satisfied with these rules, mediator clarifies once again how much time do both parties have today or the next day for the mediation process to go on. Normally each mediation session goes like one hour up to two or three hours, but the practice shows that parties can effectively work one or two hours per day, no more, because like human capacities has some limits and well normally then this process is limited to one or two hours per day. If there are legal persons represented in the process, the mediator must uh, clarify whether the parties are duly authorized. Mediators should check the power of attorney for each party because that would be a gross mistake done by the mediator if the party would be represented, but in the end of the process we could discover that there is no, uh, not enough uh, proxies or the, the power of attorney is limited for some activity. So therefore mediator checks the uh, authorization of the parties. Uh, mediator should not rush from the stage number one to the next stages because this first, this introductory part is very essential. If the rules are well explained in the beginning, it will be more clear for the parties according to what rules are they working and it will be easier for the parties to go on. Uh, there are some basic rules in mediation process which must be uh, remembered and remind to the parties. One of the rules listen when the other talks and mediators should guarantee that at the moment when one party is talking the other party is listening. If the other party does not observe this rule, mediator kindly reminds that the parties have agreed on this rule and that the party will have all possibilities to raise up his concerns or talk about the situation slightly afterwards. If the party is too active or having too many emotions and cannot just sit in silence, the mediator can give to that party a pen and a paper so all the ideas are written down on that sheet of paper. And well, sure, to guarantee the equality, mediator immediately presents two pens and two sheets of paper for both parties. This method helps for them to write down their ideas on the paper instead of uh, just shouting during the mediation process. The other rule is respect towards the other party. Mediator highly encourages the parties to show respect and dignity and not to interrupt, not to use bad words and not to show any other uh, impressions of uh, disrespect of the opponent. Mediating encourages the parties to use polite language and polite behavior. However, there are times when parties just do not know any other language but the, the bad words. So the mediator must be very flexible and see what is the level of education and what is the type of communication between the parties. So this can be flexible at times. 
mediator must be very flexible from his side, which means that, for instance, the mediator decides or promises to the parties to use a sheet of paper or to use a flip chart, but then in the process discovers that this method is not working well. So the mediator should then immediately say to the parties, well, I think that it would be better for you if I start using some other tool or some other method. So mediator must flexibly see how the process goes. Then, when the rules are explained, the mediator may proceed to the stage number one and to encourage the parties to explain their situation. When uh, clarifying the situation, mediator asks the parties who of you would like to start first and who of you would like to start explaining your situation first. Normally, the parties agree between themselves who will start. But if this agreement doesn't come, then the mediator should probably approach one party and say, well, you were initiator of the case. Would you like to explain the situation first? And then if the party agrees and says, well, yeah, I can start first, I can start telling first, then the mediator refers to the other party by asking, is it acceptable for you if the your opponent starts the case first and you will have the equal uh, possibility to explain your story in a little while and when this agreement is done the party number one starts telling the situation. Mediator should avoid the word problem. It wouldn't sound good if the mediator would say well tell me what is your problem because that sounds like too judging, too uh, too aggressive. So the mediator normally uses the word situation, case, story, like more neutral words. When one party is talking, the mediator also carefully watches the other party, watches for reactions, watches for the body language, for facial expressions, and mediators should keep some notes and some, uh, must have some page of paper, some pen, and write down everything what the party is telling. But this writing should be in a normal way by keeping the eye contact and by watching the parties and the hand should write just on, on, uh, on its own without lo uh, losing the contact with the parties. Why notes are so important? Because in the phase number two, parties will tell a lot of information and it will be impossible to remember all details later on. So mediator should not interrupt, mediator should carefully listen to the parties, give this field for free speech, but also at the same time write down what the parties are saying. At the same time mediator rephrases what the parties are saying, uh, ask uh, open questions to help the parties to go on uh, with the story, and only when the story is over, mediator thanks for telling this story and refers to the other party by uh, saying thank you that you listened to your opponent and would you like to tell this story from your side and then the first party will listen. Mediator must show active listening at all time. What does it mean active listening? Although we listen with our ears, and the ears are open, but listening, uh, if we do not show that we are listening, is not considered to be active. Active listening means that we are slightly shaking the head, that we are repeating some of the words said, but mediator is a professional and mediator must rephrase what the parties are saying. Rephrasing helps the other party to understand better what the first party has meant. Plus, it gives some feedback for the mediator to understand that also he understands the story well, that there are no misinterpretations or there are no like um, other thoughts about what really happened. Re rephrasing should be done in a neutral as much as positive language possible. So mediators shouldn't be judging and shouldn't, try, shouldn't use harsh words which could be uh, offensive for the opponent. A uh, mediator should also listen to the story of both parties by guaranteeing them equal time. For instance, if one party is talking a monologue for 20 minutes, 
then probably this 20 minutes time should be guaranteed for the opponent as well. So the mediator should think how both parties are feeling if one party is talking too much. So the mediator should somehow organize this process of listening nice and acceptable for both parties. Uh, so that, that takes some skills and that takes some planning for the mediator. Uh, questions during the second phase, during the situation phase, are allowed from the side of mediator. However, these questions should be more encouraging to tell and not too narrow to stop the story. The aim of phase number two is get the world story what happened. So therefore mediator writes down the facts, writes down the details to be discussed further, but first of all, all story needs to be told. Mediator also summarizes what has been heard. Mediator uh, rephrases and well tells the words like, so what you are saying is that you signed a contract but you are not satisfied with a particular clause or so as I understand from you, you have a dispute now with your employer about this situation. And then the party which just told the story normally answers, yes, that's what I told. Or if the mediator has not understood the party right, the party could say, well, no, actually, I told you just about some other thing. So the mediator should just review his notes and see whether he really followed the story of the party. Then, when the situation is clarified from both parties, the mediator can proceed with the phase number three, which is clarification of interests of the parties. At the mediation process, you know already that positions of the parties is not the same as interests. Positions are our like last stage show, which we which we present to the other party by pretending that this is what we want. Normally, when we write a claim to the court, we show our position, but the interests are deeper values of the parties which are behind the positions. So therefore, the mediator should help the parties to discover their real interests. And in this stage, the mediator asks the party to discover what is important for them, why they want to reach a particular goal, what will happen when they will reach this goal, and so, in this stage number three, mediator starts using actively uh, some visual uh, tools like writing on the flip chart the interests of the parties. So, to help them to see what they are saying, what is important for them. It is a psychological uh, factor that normally the parties do not want to leave their positions in the beginning. So therefore, the mediator should show that the positions are respected, but in the process of negotiation, these deeper values and interests are still discovered. Mediator also helps the parties to find their common interests and their common goals. In many times, for instance in family cases, our welfare and education of children is a common goal for both parents. Well, this is just as an example in one case and mediators should not think that in all types of family cases there will be common interests, completely equal interests for all parties. Every mediation case is pretty much different. Mediators should help the parties to discover their values, to discover their hidden interests, to discover their value systems, and to discover the needs of the uh, parties and to the maybe persons connected with the parties. And by doing this, the mediator writes on these visual materials, these interests, so the parties could see, follow, and later on uh, work on possible solutions. In phase number four, which is called looking for solutions, in phase number four, mediator can start helping the parties to find solutions. It is not allowed for the mediator to come up with his solutions. Instead, the parties are the ones who work on solutions, who propose solutions. And mediator is just assisting them. 
Mediator is not a legal advisor, mediator is not a psychotherapist, mediator is a person who helps in negotiation process, so therefore no offer can come from the mediator. One of the methods how the solutions are created is by using the method of brainstorming. The parties, without much thinking, just say at this stage what they would like to get, what solution would be acceptable. For instance, I want that you apol make apology. I want to get a uh, thousand euros comp compensation. So the parties are saying just one by one those possible solutions and mediator is writing them down possibly on the uh, flip chart or on the blackboard, whatever material, whatever uh, tool the mediator has at his disposal. It is also possible to write those solutions on the sheet of paper and then show to the parties, you see, these are your solutions which you just created. And mediator uh, has very strict borderline between I and you. There are no we in the mediation process and mediator should never take the uh, position of one or the another party. So therefore mediator shows that these are your ideas and I'm helping you to create these ideas, but you are responsible for them. Uh, when all the solutions are written on the sheet of paper, the mediator carefully goes through each of these solutions possible and helps the parties to discuss uh, could this solution possibly work, what would be the gain, what would be the benefits of these solutions, and then each of proposals are carefully discussed. If there are five proposals written on the sheet of paper, then mediator discuss with parties those five. If there are ten, all ten are discussed. And then, if the parties come up to solution, the mediator can proceed with the phase number five and try to help the parties to shape this agreement in either paper form or many times the mediation process ends up with a handshake, with a friendly handshake and well the parties even do not need any paper form confirmation. Well if the case has already been submitted to the court then normally the parties want to prepare amicable agreement because then this document can be submitted to the court for further approval. If this is out of court matter the parties can also possibly want to have this agreement uh, be written on the paper. In that case, uh, the mediator can probably uh, help parties to prepare this agreement or the parties can contract their lawyer, like a, a different uh, professional, who writes this agreement. If the mediator has promised in the agreement, which is signed in the beginning, that the mediator will write the final contract. Then the mediator must have all the notes, all the details of what the parties have agreed on. In that case, the mediator is responsible for drafting this document, then showing to the parties, maybe uh, making some proofreading or, or making some amendments if the parties wishes so. And then at the final, final process of mediation, the parties sign this contract concludes the mediation process and we can say that the mediation process is successfully completed. As was explained in the beginning of this video, the mediation process is flexible. There are times when the mediator see, sees that the parties have almost reached an agreement, but then the parties come up with some new information and mediator is forced to return back even to the stage number two or stage number three. Uh, this is not a catastrophe, so sometimes happens in mediation process. However, I strongly encourage all mediators not to rush to the result, not to rush to the end of the process, but instead give the time for proper discussion of situation in the phase number two and to discover everything which is connected with the case and only then proceed to the next stages, if the process will be peacefully and uh, in a due time done, then there will be no walking back and forth at the stages of mediation. I wish you a good luck in mediation process and thank you for watching this video.